Did you just get your offer accepted? Congratulations. It might have been a bit of a bumpy ride to get to this point, but don't take that seatbelt off quite yet because we still have some work to do. But first, a quick little pep talk. Now that you're under contract, accept the fact that things will come up. You might not like it. There is even a chance that your deal will fall apart due to something that is completely out of your control. You brush yourself off and you move on to the next. You'll be okay. Probably even see what you didn't get was actually a stroke of luck. Just keep in mind that homeownership is worth the grind. With all of the ups and downs that life throws at us, you'll always have a place to go and you can't put a price on that kind of security. Accept the grind and enjoy the ride. We'll be looking at a 30-day close as an example because we have a lot of those in Southwest Florida right now, but if you have a five-week close, a six-week close, all the same stuff is happening. So this is what's happening. Week one, the buyer has a pretty heavy to-do list. Week two, our fate is basically in the inspection report. Week three and four, we are waiting for the lender's underwriter to verify your income and assets. They're also verifying the property's value and that the title is clear. Make sure we have enough time for the lender to do everything they need to do. But what is it that you do and when? So let's go ahead and start with day zero. Day zero is the effective date. That's the date that the last party signed the contract. On day zero, you are going to get loan estimates from two or three different lenders because different interest rates and different lender fees may have a huge impact on what you can afford. Here's what you'll need. Here's what you'll look at on each of the loan estimates. You or your realtor need to send that executed contracts to your chosen lender ASAP, absolutely no later than day five, but you really wanna have this done by day two or three. And don't forget to lock in that rate. Hopefully you have an amazing realtor that will make this transaction very smooth, but we are not taking any chances when the stakes are this high. Here is a template that gives you the buyer a to-do list and under that is a checklist basically to make sure that everyone else is doing their job. The significance of having all this information laid out, we're taking huge preventative measures away from the human error obstacles and those are the most common obstacles that we see when we're under contract. Moving on to the deposit, AKA escrow deposit, AKA earnest money deposit. This is the amount that you're paying in the first three days that demonstrates how serious you are about the purchase. If you don't make this deposit in the first three days, the contract will be void. So if that's your thing. Also in the first few days, you are gonna be shopping for homeowner's insurance. So you can do a few things here. You can either use a provider that you have history with, maybe they'll give you a discount if you have it bundled somewhere else, or you can use a few referred providers from your lender. You can even ask your realtor to help you get a few quotes. I personally will send a templated email out to a few of my top providers for my client, and I will send the information that I already have. They will then call the client and fill in the gaps to get a few different quotes. Just make sure with your realtor that that's what they do too. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Okay, now that we are in the inspection period, this is seven to 15 days depending on what it says in your contract. That's usually the, the time frame. You definitely wanna make sure that you have the state down, but the first thing that's happening is your agent is going to schedule the inspection. The second thing that's happening is your agent is going to in attend the inspection. You can go or not. It's boring, it's long and boring. The third thing that's gonna happen is that you are gonna pay for the inspection. A day or two after that, you're going to receive the report. Okay, you're gonna go over those things with your realtor. Remember that all houses have problems, they all have issues, do not be alarmed, but you definitely want to address the health and safety stuff. Your insurance provider will probably require it and your lender will probably require it. The lender needs to feel that the place is livable. If there's something in there that is not considered livable, they probably won't give you funding for it. So, you know, things like the, the oven and, and, and the AC working and stuff like that. When it comes to negotiating about stuff that you see on the report, Keep a few things in mind that if you were made aware of what's on the report before you made the offer, the seller won't think that it's fair if you were asking them to repair something that you were already made aware of. If you're asking them to fix everything you see on that report, they're likely to say no to that as well. Keep that stuff in mind. It's important in negotiations to look at the perspective of the seller. 
So the appraisal can take two or three weeks um, after being ordered by the lender. You or your realtor should verify that this was ordered. So the point of it is mortgage companies order a third party to assess what they believe to be the market value. They do this to make sure that they aren't lending out more money than what they can get back in the event that you stop paying the mortgage. Title problems can prolong a closing for six months up to a year. It's not often that you'll get too far in the under contract process before they're discovered. Common title problems are encroachments, liens, wills, errors, disputes, or even human error. You'll probably be fine. You can get your utility providers for your new place from your agent. Call maybe a week ahead of time to schedule the transfer to be done into your name maybe a, a day before closing. That way you're sure that it will be done in case there's any kind of delays for whatever reason. At the same time, call the providers that you currently have in the place that you live. Make sure that you're paid up and scheduled for disconnect. Final walkthrough. This usually takes place a day before closing. It takes maybe 15 minutes walking through to make sure that everything looks the same way that it did the last time you saw it. It got easier, right? So you close. Don't forget to transfer your mailing address with the post office as well as all the monthly services like your credit cards and stuff. You want to make sure that they have your new address. And congratulations. If you made it to the end, thank you for watching. I'm Stephanie LaShawn. I'm in Southwest Florida with Remax Realty Team and Cape Coral. If there's any questions, go ahead and comment or feel free to email me at lachancelistings.com. All right, thank you. Bye.